G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here with a very interesting piece of information for you from New Scientist magazine. You see, for a long time I've been wondering why it is that otherwise intelligent people maintain that they can't remotely visualise. Sorry about that. There's a couple of kangaroos arguing over bread on my front lawn. Where was I? I was saying that I can't understand why a bunch of otherwise intelligent people claim that they can't imagine any God theory complicated enough to run the universe. All right? The atheists typically claim that because they rejected a really childish infantile God when they were a child, therefore nobody else is allowed to believe in any God that's any more complex than that. And... Uh, June 9th, New Scientist, page 16. They have a lovely little article. Have a look at the page, see, I'm not making it up. Autistic people more likely to be atheists. People with autism appear less likely to believe in God, a discovery that strengthens the theory that religious belief relies on being able to imagine what a, quote, God is thinking, a capacity known as mentalizing. One of the hallmarks of autism is a reduced ability to infer what other people are thinking. So Aaron Noren Zayan of the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada, and colleagues reasoned that if thinking about a personal God engages mentalising abilities, then mentalising deficits would make people less likely to believe in God. Right? Investigating, the team found that adolescents with autism who have mentalising deficits, were almost 90% less likely than non-autistic peers to express a strong belief in God. Noren Zayn's team performed three other studies, so there's four studies in total, which involve questioning hundreds of people about religious belief and mentalisation. In each study, a professed belief in God correlated with higher mentalising scores. Bracket, capital P, capital L, small o, capital S, capital O for one, comma, capital D-O-I, colon, 10.31371, slash journal, dot, P-O-N-E, lowercase, dot, 00368880, close bracket, full stop. Don't know what that refers to, but it was important enough they printed it, so I read it out for you. However, the findings do not prove that belief in God relies exclusively on mentalization, says Noren Zayan. He says there are many reasons why people believe in God, whether or not they are good at mentalizing. And that's the end of that article. Right? We have another New Scientist magazine. This time we're talking 17 March 2012. Special edition, The God Issue. The surprising new science of religion. Well, I've been a comparative theologist for 20 years, so I don't know what's new about it. Why our minds have a God-shaped space. The idea that launched a thousand civilizations. God's existence put to the test. Reclaiming the best bits of religion for atheists and why religion may outlast science. So let's have a look at the second new scientist, the older one in the stack. God can't live with him, can't live without him. Only by understanding what religion is and is not can we ever hope to move on. The God issue, born believers, our minds solve fundamental problems in a way that leaves a God-shaped space waiting to be filled. Who believes what? 2.2 billion Christians, 1.6 billion Islamics, 900 million Hindus. Secular, non-religious, agnostic, atheist, 750 million. Chinese traditional religion, 400 million. Shamanism and other tribal religions, 400 million. Buddhism, 375 million. Sikhism, 25 million. Judaism, 15 million. Other, 80 million. Yeah, well, try this one. The Santa Delusion. If religion comes naturally to children, doesn't that put God on the same footing as Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy? Now, Potola 54 and Garriott in Mendham both quite regularly suggest that one. That if you've got any belief in any God theory, it's no different to Bugs Bunny or the Easter Bunny or the Tooth Fairy or Father Christmas. So let's continue. 
Santa Claus or the Tooth Fairy, a being that children should outgrow. And does it not also mean that belief in God is childish? Let's examine these claims. The analogy begins to weaken when we recognise that many adults come to believe in God having rejected the idea as children, like I did, or after rethinking their childhood beliefs and embracing them as adults. Well, no, I believe differently to what I was taught to believe as a kid. That is, they sometimes reason their way to religious beliefs. That's what I did. People do not begin or resume believing in Father Christmas in adulthood. See, qualitative difference. Santa and the Tooth Fairy also fail to fully fit the conceptual, conceptual space that children and adults have because of their natural cognition. They do not readily account for perceived order and purpose in the natural world, for great fortune and misfortune, for matters concerning morality, life, death and the afterlife, and they have little relevance in day-to-day -day matters outside their very limited ranges of concern. That is Christmas presents and compensation for lost teeth. Their super-knowledge and super-perception is circumscribed in curious ways. Santa knows if you've been bad or good, but does he know all that you do? The tooth fairy knows when you have lost a tooth, but not where you have put your car keys. Basically, your Santa Claus and tooth fairy and Easter bunny are um, animistic, pantheistic, spiritualistic... Um, God theory is not unlike the idea of the Roman pantheon of the gods which was transmogrified into the Christian calendar of the saints. Second column. Note too that adults do not typically eat sacrifices placed out for gods and pretend the gods ate them the way they eat Santa's cookies. You might argue that Buddhist monks put out a begging bowl at a shrine and take the food that's left in it, but they don't pretend the gods have eaten it. Their theory is the gods take the essence of the food and the monks take the mortal remains. So it's a valid comment. They don't pretend, um, they don't typically eat sacrifices placed out for gods and pretend that the gods ate them the way they eat Santa's cookies. If indoctrination and theatrical acts of deception were the bulk of what gods had going for them conceptually, adults would outgrow them too. It is easy to be sympathetic to the idea that we should abandon quote childish unquote thinking in adulthood. But why does labelling an idea childish automatically make it bad, dangerous or wrong? It is true that children know less than adults and make more mistakes in reasoning, so their judgments are not as trustworthy. Up to a point from out of the mouths of babes and innocents there shall come the wisdom of the ages. So, you know, that's a comment that I'd um, <clears throat> take issue with. But what follows from this is only that we should more carefully scrutinise the beliefs of children than those of adults, particularly if they deviate from what adults believe. The Emperor's got no clothes. But adults generally do believe in gods. That such belief begins in childhood and typically endures into adulthood places it in the same class as believing in the permanence of solid objects, the continuity of time, the predictability of natural laws, the fact that cause precedes effect, and that people have minds, that their mothers love them, and numerous others. If believing in gods is being childish in the same respect as holding these sorts of beliefs, then belief in gods is in good company. That's interesting, isn't it? What do you reckon? Hmm? Because I reckon I can really relate to that um, bit about autistic people who don't relate to other people being incapable of imagining the mind of God. I mean, when I was an atheist, I was a very arrogant and very ignorant individual, but I thought I knew it all, and if I couldn't imagine it, then I didn't believe it capable of existing. And this fellow reckons that uh, atheists need a religion. He's written a book, Religion for Atheists. wonder how many of those he'll sell. Must have sold a few to get into this magazine. For me, it was nursing training. Cure the sick, comfort the dying, raise the dead. It was being right up close with reality that taught me that atheism is a bullshit childish idea. And if it's a bullshit childish idea that autistics are specially adapted to be sucked in by, well, that doesn't really surprise me. 
But just remember, atheism is not a science. It has no correlation with intelligence. It has a 90% correlation with autism. You should be a lot less arrogant, you atheists. You may be wrong, you know. Ciao.